Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And today we've got a short video about one of the uh, stretch projects that we were able to add on to this yard period. One of the areas of greatest concern to the museum was the areas around the propeller shafts back aft. While they had not failed, all four showed significant corrosion and had been relying on their original packing for much longer than it was ever intended. As a recap, in service, the propeller's usually spinning. Bold statement, I know. Which means that it's distributing its weight around its packing evenly. The packing leaks a little bit, which is cool because there are bilge pumps running to dewater that, and it helps lubricate and cool the bearing where the propeller is spinning. Obviously, as a museum ship, We've done all sorts of videos about the propellers being locked in place. We don't run the engines anymore. We can't spin the propellers. The propellers don't spin on their own. So while the Navy did all of that stuff to lock the propeller shafts in place, they didn't do anything special around the gland seal where the shaft actually passes through the people part of the ship and into the uh, free flood part of the ship. They wrapped it with the same four or five layers of fibrous packing that they would do on any active ship. Cranked down on the bolts, and it was watertight at that time. On my last museum ship, there was a significant water intrusion issue around the gland seal for the propeller shafts that caused water to sit in the bilges in the shaft alleys that eventually caused some corrosion uh, to the point that there were holes in those bilges. So it's something that, in particular, I am very concerned about. One of the great things about New Jersey is she's a relatively modern museum ship. She was turned into a museum comparatively recent when you look at the, the history of uh, museum ships. So a solution to this has already been invented, actually two of them. One common solution is to simply remove the propellers. Some ships just remove the propellers and leave the shafts there, but they don't have significant weight on them anymore. Remember, our propellers are about 20 tons each. Some ships, like Texas, remove the propellers and the shaft and just blank over that opening entirely. We did not want to separate the propellers from the ship, and since we did not see any damage to the propellers or corrosion to the hull around the propellers, we decided to leave them in place, which means that they're still putting weight on that gland seal. So, we're copying something that had been done on several destroyer museums over the years, including Joseph P. Kennedy, probably the first museum ship to receive this, and something we were able to inspect for ourselves on Slater a couple of years ago when we visited her in dry dock. It's something that they call boxing the shafts. And it's essentially a round welded collar that goes on the propeller shaft. Behind me, you might actually see these three guys in the scissor lift working on installing the boxing for the outboard starboard shaft. The first thing you do is you take a, uh, a round flat disc, you cut it in half, you put the two sides on the shaft and you weld it to the shaft itself like a collar. The next thing you do is you take a piece of curved plate Again, you're going to do this in two halves. You're going to wrap one half around the inside, one half around the outside, and you're going to weld that to the collar, you're going to weld it to each other, and you're going to weld it to the gland seal. So now this is an extra belt and suspenders protection for the ship that is both going to keep the water away from the gland seal so that that collar has to fail before the packing becomes impacted, and then that has to take however many, however many years immersed before it will fail, and it's going to help support the weight of the propeller and the shaft and keep it from setting down on the packing, crushing that and opening a gap at the top. But most importantly, it's completely removable. We can cut that off and return the ship to its original configuration without any damage done. We're only doing this to the two outboard shafts because those actually have long propeller shafts coming off of them. The two inboard shafts 
have the propellers mounted on the ends of the skegs or the twin docking keel. So they're not facing the same kind of pressure and don't have the same kind of corrosion on them as the two outboard shafts. We were able to do this project, which was one of our stretch goals. It wasn't one of the things we had originally spec'd out, but we were able to do this project thanks to you guys' support. The number of you who've come out for tours, the number of you who've donated, uh, have really allowed us to start adding these newer things onto the project, which are gonna go a long way towards keeping the ship preserved and watertight for the next 30 plus years. This project will probably be finished by the end of this week, or actually it might be finished by the time you're watching this video. So if you wanna see the boxes around the propeller shafts for yourself, be sure to come out for one of our tours. We had almost entirely sold out, so we added some new dates, including Memorial Day, Friday evening, May 10th, and the first weekend in June. So if you haven't had a chance to get your tickets yet, be sure to go online, battleshipnewjersey.org, or the link in the description below, to get your tickets to come see the ship in dry dock and the work that we're doing. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to donate to support the museum. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about us and the channel. Thanks for watching.